Now, if you don't want to sneeze, press the skin on the bridge of your nose with your fingers. When you do it, your brain receives an alarm signal. Very quickly, it puts the brakes on all other processes, including the sneezing reflex. By the way, the longest sneezing fit was recorded in 1981. (laughs) Sorry. It lasted for 976 days. During this time, a woman from the UK sneezed more than a million times. The part of your brain that's responsible for vision is in the back of your head. Interestingly, the right side of your brain controls the vision on the left side and vice versa. If you're in some loud place, for example, in a club or at a concert, close your ears to better hear your friends. Push the tragus, the pointed skin-covered cartilage in front of the ear canal, into your ear. Then turn this ear toward your friend. If you feel anxious, press your fingers into a fist with your thumb sticking out and slowly blow on this finger. If you can't stop hiccups, put an ice cube on your tongue. Or you can close your ears with your palms and drink a glass of water through a straw in one breath. Pulling the tip of your tongue or raising your arms toward the ceiling can also be helpful. On average, when a person snores, the sound doesn't get louder than 60 decibels. That's as loud as a regular conversation. But sometimes, the noise levels can reach 80 decibels. That's as loud as a working food blender. If you want to wake up faster, hold your breath for some time. When you do it, your heart starts beating more rapidly, and your body turns on the active mode. But don't overdo it. If you wake up too abruptly, you'll put unnecessary stress on your heart. If you feel moody, hold a pencil between your teeth. The muscles involved in smiling will get down to work. This will send special impulses to your brain, and it'll start producing endorphins. In no time, your smile will become much more sincere. Right-handed people tend to chew most of their food on the right side of their mouths, and those who are left-handed use their left side more. The smell of rosemary can help you activate your super memory. Whenever you need to learn something by heart, do it while lying down in bed with a sprig of rosemary nearby. It'll help you memorize the info more effectively and faster. If your leg has fallen asleep, shake your head. In about a minute, you'll realize that your muscles have relaxed and the pins and needles sensation has passed. The muscles that help your eyes focus make around 100,000 movements a day. If you want to make your leg muscles move as much, you'll need to walk 50 miles. Deja vu might actually be something like a brain processing lag. There's a theory claiming it might happen when your brain is moving information from one part to another. If there's even the tiniest delay in that process, your brain will get the same information twice. In this case, it'll process it as an event that happened before. Out of all those people who can move their ears, only 30% can move just one ear. Your mouth burns when you're snacking on pineapple because while you're eating this fruit, it's eating you back. Pineapple is the only known food that contains bromelain. That's an enzyme that breaks down proteins. Luckily, your stomach acid knows how to deal with the offending enzyme. If you have a tickle in your throat, scratch your ear. This stimulates a nerve, which results in a muscle spasm in your throat. And in no time, the tickle is gone. Surprisingly, you burn more calories when you're sleeping than when you're watching TV. Ask your friend to sit down on a chair and put your index finger on their forehead. Then tell them to stand up without using their hands. They won't be able to do it. Just like salamanders regrow their tails, humans might be able to regenerate cartilage. That's rubber-like stuff surrounding your joints. Scientists have recently discovered that cartilage could repair itself. This process is likely to be the most effective at the ankle not that effective in the knee, and the least effective in the hip. If you're lying in bed and suddenly experience vertigo, place one of your feet on the floor. Your brain will receive the information that you're standing on something firm, and the unpleasant sensation will pass. Only 30% of people can flare their nostrils. If someone is tapping you on the back while you're hugging, they're non-verbally asking you to let go. 
People with a single palmar crease have just one line running across their palm. Such people are very rare, just 1.5% of the world's population. Most people have two palmar creases. Men are more likely to have a single palmar crease than women. In most cases, it runs in families. Your taste buds have a very short life cycle. They live for no longer than 10 to 14 days. Your lips are hundreds of times more sensitive than your fingertips. Your skin wrinkles when you stay in the water for too long, but it doesn't happen because it absorbs water. In reality, wrinkled fingers and toes provide you with a better grip. Studies have proved that sneezing is your nose's way to reset. A sneeze reboots the cells that line the insides of your nose. They're called cilia. If a person has anosmia, which is also called smell blindness, they don't distinguish and detect smells. The amount of food you consume in your lifetime will weigh as much as 8 Asian elephants. No wonder that people spend almost 4 years of their life eating. Your skin analyzes 1 million bits of data per second. Your ears and nose process 100,000 bits each. And your tongue is the least productive. It analyzes just 1,000 bits. Multitasking is kind of impossible. What we consider multitasking is actually just our brain switching between different tasks really fast. Unfortunately, in this case, people tend to make mistakes much more often. Plus, you may need twice as much time to do a task as usual. On the other hand, when you're engaged in some physical activity you've done many times before, you can perform a mental task too. That's why you can easily jog or take a shower and think about problems at work. If you see someone constantly fixing their sleeves, they likely feel very nervous, and fiddling with something is a self-soothing technique. You can check how unique you are by chewing on a sprig of cilantro. For some people, this herb may taste similar to soap because the plant contains a chemical used in soap making. But only 4-14% to of the world's population have special genes that can detect it. Are you one of them? A grown-up person uses around 200 muscles to make just one step. Your eyes never stop moving while taking in visual information. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see the whole picture. These movements go unnoticed because your brain is a great video editor. It stabilizes the images and connects tons of fragments into one smooth video. Your stomach gets a totally new lining every 3-4 to four days. That's how your body prevents the stomach from digesting itself. When a person lies, the temperature around their nose and in the inner corners of their eyes rises. This phenomenon is known as the Pinocchio effect. Hmm. The liver is the only human organ that can regenerate completely. Even if it's a mere 25% of the original liver weight, the organ can get back to its full size. Synesthesia is an unusual and rare ability. People who have it can taste music or hear colors. But only one in every 2,000 people has it. These days, our finger and toenails grow faster than they did half a century ago. It might be because people eat more proteins today. You start feeling thirsty once your water loss reaches 1% of your body weight. More than 5% and you may even faint. Water loss that exceeds 10% of the body weight, um, we'll just say that it doesn't end well. Your brain can generate more than 48 thoughts in under a minute. It's almost 3,000 thoughts per hour and more than 70,000 per day. Each person has around 150,000 hairs on their head. On average, every strand grows about a half an inch per month. If you combine the growth from each hair, it would measure the distance of 10 miles per year. If you get a leg cramp, pull your big toe toward yourself. This will stretch your muscles and reduce the spasm. People have bacteria that can produce electricity living in their intestines. These bacteria give off electrons, which creates tiny electrical currents. This might be the bacteria's way to generate energy. Maybe turn on some lights. Hey, it's dark in there. 
By the end of their life, the average person can recall up to 150 trillion pieces of information. If you brush your teeth before eating or drinking something, you might end up damaging your taste buds. That's because most kinds of toothpaste contain two chemicals, sodium lauryl ether sulfate and sodium lauryl sulfate, that decrease your ability to taste sweet things and increase your ability to taste bitter food. The DEC2 gene mutation allows people to have just a few hours of sleep a night and still feel great. They don't get tired and never sleep in. Boy, where do I get one of those? On average, these people wake up at 4 or 5 a.m. Only up to 5% of the world's population has this feature. Only humans can produce emotional tears. Other living beings cry to lubricate their eyes. Women have more taste buds on their tongues than men do. It might be one of the reasons why 35% of ladies are super tasters, people who feel flavors more strongly than others, and only 15% of guys can boast the same ability. It's hard for people to recognize someone they know if, in a photo, this person doesn't have eyebrows. This proves that eyebrows are more important for face recognition than eyes. When clasping their hands, 50% of people put their right thumb above the left one. 49% of people position their left thumb over the right. And only 1% of people place their thumbs next to each other. Your brain contains more than 86 billion nerve cells, which are joined with one another by 100 trillion connections. That's way more than the number of stars in our home Milky Way galaxy. And if you decided to count all those numerous nerve cells, it would take you up to 3,000 years. A tremendous waste of time. Your brain's memory capacity equals 4 terabytes on a hard drive. That's more than 8 million photos. You're likely to keep in memory up to 10,000 different faces. This number is different from person to person, but the average is 5,000. It doesn't mean you can put a name to each face. It's only about recognizing the features. If you walked in the same direction for 12 hours a day, you would need around 800 days to travel around the globe. The Bajau is a group of nomadic people that live in the waters surrounding the Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Thanks to a rare DNA mutation, they can stay underwater for up to 13 minutes. They also dive to a depth of 200 feet. Blue cheese can affect your dreams, making them more vivid. Your ears might pop or even hurt when you are on an airplane. You can solve this problem by simply chewing some gum. This opens up the eustachian tube, a small passage that connects your throat and your middle ear. Opening this passage up helps equalize the pressure in your ears and puts an end to the popping. You can also yawn to open up the eustachian tube. Your dreams are a complex mix of your imagination, memories, and knowledge. The average person has from 4 to 7 dreams every night, but not all people remember them. Even if fingerprints get badly damaged, they grow back with their original pattern. If you have to deal with complaining customers, put a mirror behind your back. When an angry person approaches you, they'll see themselves in the mirror. This will prevent them from acting rudely. No one likes seeing themselves this way. Your feet are likely to become bigger with time. When people grow older, ligaments and tendons in their feet weaken. This makes the arches flatter, and feet become wider and longer. Only 3% of people in the world have lines that form the letters X on both their palms. In many cultures, this is believed to be a sign of a strong personality. The human brain is 73% water, just like your heart. That's why if your brain loses even 2% of liquid, you start feeling exhausted. This also makes your memory worse, shortens your attention span, and puts a dampener on your mood. In most people, their height is the same as their arm span. Check it out! A particular gene mutation results in super-dense bones that are almost impossible to break. They're several times tougher than the average person's bones. People with this mutation also have skin that is less prone to aging. 
You might have noticed little dots traveling in squiggly lines when you're looking at a bright light or blue sky. They're usually only visible for a second or two. Sometimes they look like tiny worms. Well, those are your white blood cells moving through the capillaries in front of the retina, the light-sensitive tissue at the back of your eyes. Most people don't even notice the dots unless you ask them to pay attention. If someone is listening to you with their eyebrows raised, they're likely genuinely interested in your story. If you decided to uncoil the human DNA, the whole thing would stretch for 10 billion miles. That's 40,000 times the distance between Earth and the Moon. Human teeth are almost as strong as those of a shark. The enamel of your teeth, that's the outer layer, is the hardest substance in your entire body. Your nostrils don't work with the same efficiency all the time. When you breathe, one nostril does most of the work. They switch every couple of hours. Your right ear is more responsive to speech, and your left ear is better at perceiving music. Researchers think that's because it's your left hemisphere that processes speech, while the right one deals with music and other creative functions. Your lips look red because of a great number of tiny blood capillaries right below the skin. While enjoying your favorite cold food or beverage, you might suddenly get a painful brain freeze. This happens because the nerves at the roof of your mouth get frozen. They send signals to your brain asking it to please stop eating such cold stuff. But you can overcome this unpleasant sensation by pressing your tongue against the roof of your mouth. Do it as hard as you can the pain will soon disappear. Your lips don't sweat because there are no sweat glands there. They also have no glands producing a special protective film that keeps your skin hydrated. That's why your lips are so vulnerable to the sun, wind, and cold. They also dry out faster than other body parts. You wouldn't be able to taste food if your body didn't produce saliva. Your taste buds have special receptors that recognize different flavors. But without some liquid, flavors won't bind to the molecules of these receptors. There are only a few cells in your body that will stay with you throughout your entire life. Those are the cells in the inner lens of your eye, the muscle cells of your heart, and the neurons of your cerebral cortex. That's a fancy word for the outer layers of your brain. Millennials are people who are now between 25 and 40 years old and they tend to be more forgetful than older people. The main reason for this phenomenon is higher levels of stress these folks have. People with albinism have little to no melanin. That's the pigment that gives color to your hair, skin, and eyes. It's a rare condition. In the US, only 1 in 18,000 to 20,000 people is born with albinism. But there's also ocular albinism, and it's even rarer. Experts think only 1 in 50,000 people has ocular albinism. During just one day, the blood in your body travels over 12,000 miles. That's half as long as the distance around Earth. Almost 25% of your body's cholesterol is in your brain. This substance is crucial for your memory and learning abilities. But the blood-brain barrier doesn't allow your brain cells to get cholesterol from the blood. That's why your brain produces its own kind of cholesterol. Paradoxically, even though your teeth are a part of the skeletal system, they don't count as bones. It might be because they, sadly, can't regenerate. But if a bone is broken, it heals on its own by producing new bone cells. Your eyes can see something for a mere 13 milliseconds, and it'll be enough time for your brain to process the image. For comparison, the average blink lasts from 100 to 400 milliseconds. Bright sunlight makes 17 to 35% of people sneeze. This phenomenon is called the photic sneeze reflex. Your fingers are extremely sensitive. They can feel objects that are no bigger than the width of your hair. If your finger was the size of Earth, you'd still feel the difference between cars and houses. If there is a calorie chart in a restaurant, people tend to order less healthy and more high-calorie food. They compare the difference between, let's say, a burger and a large serving of Caesar salad and notice that it isn't that big. And since the burger seems to be more filling, that's what they order. 
But when people don't know that a big portion of salad contains almost as many calories as the burger, they pick a healthier option. So get this, if someone managed to uncoil all the DNA in the human body, it would stretch out to around 10 billion miles. Hey, do the math. That's twice the distance from Earth to Pluto. And that's not the only awesome thing our body is capable of. Trillions of nerve connections are powering your memory nonstop. According to studies, after looking at 2,500 images for a mere 3 seconds, most people can recall if they have seen these pictures with 92% accuracy. Wow! Your body glows, emitting tiny amounts of barely visible light. This glow is the product of biochemical reactions going on inside your organism. The light waxes and wanes throughout the day. But even though it is visible, you can't detect it with the unaided eye. From 1 to 6 pounds of your body weight is made up of bacteria. And from 100 million to 1 billion bacteria can live on just one tooth in your mouth. So, please brush. It's impossible to taste your food without saliva. All because the chemicals in your food must be dissolved in saliva before they get detected by your taste buds. Even though it sounds like a myth, eating too many carrots can indeed turn your skin orange. Carrots have high amounts of beta-carotene. That's a compound that can cause keratinemia. If you have too much of this compound in your bloodstream, it'll hold on to parts of your body with thicker skin. I'm talking about the soles of your feet, your knees, elbows, palms, and even certain areas around your nose. But worry not, this condition is not dangerous. You can easily reverse it by decreasing the amount of beta-carotene-filled foods you consume. The chin muscles, scientifically known as the mentalis muscles, look pretty quirky, giving us mixed feelings. Just look at these creepy tiny tentacles. And still, they make it possible for us to create all kinds of facial expressions that involve the lips, chin, and cheeks. And yes, they are the culprits behind those weird wrinkles and crevices on the skin of your chinny-chin-chin. All because these muscles don't pull on themselves, but yank on the skin. Now, people can live without some organs, leading a normal life. The human body consists of singular organs and those that come in pairs. And speaking of the latter, you only need one of those to survive. Your small intestine is actually not so small. It's taller than you, measuring around 23 feet. Now, the cornea, that transparent front cover on your eyes, doesn't have any blood supply. Instead, it receives oxygen directly from the air. Human beings develop their unique fingerprints very early in life, while they're still embryos, just three months after being conceived. By the way, even if fingerprints get badly damaged, they tend to grow back to their original pattern. All people are born with a diving reflex. They can get activated and shut bodily functions if one is drowning or is submerged in the water. The human brain is by no means smooth. But if you decided to flatten all those wrinkles covering it, the brain would be the size of a pillowcase. But not as useful. Newborn babies only blink once or twice in a minute. For comparison, a grown-up person blinks at least 10 times within the same time. Our lungs are the only organs that can float on the water, all because they're made up of around 300 million balloon-like structures called alveoli. Also, even if we're perfectly healthy, our lungs are never completely germ-free or sterile. Your nose is a superhero. It's your very own heater, filter, and humidifier. This organ is lined with tiny bone-like shells called turbinates. They contain blood vessels capable of heating the air and goblet cells that can help humidify the air. Also, the air you breathe gets filtered in your nose before going further to your lungs. Now, every time you eat something, your esophagus, the organ your food travels through to reach the stomach, moves in a series of wave-like contractions, pushing the food forward. This is known as peristalsis. There's a bond between your digestive system and your brain, the gut-brain axis. This is why stress or brain issues can affect the way your body digests food. Now, even though hiccups are typically harmless and resolve by themselves after a couple of minutes, they aren't exactly pleasant. So you should probably know that they might occur because of changes in temperature. The density of your brain increases throughout your whole life, all because new neural connections pop up. They appear because the structure of the brain keeps changing too. If you don't want to sneeze, press the skin on the bridge of your nose with your fingers. 
When you do it, your brain receives an alarm signal. Very quickly, it puts the brake on all those other processes, including the sneezing reflex. By the way, studies have found that sneezing is your nose's way to reset. A sneeze reboots the cells that line the inside of your nose. They're called cilia. The part of your brain that's responsible for vision is in the back of your head. Interestingly, the right side of your brain controls the vision on the left side and vice versa. If you're in some loud place, for example in a club or at a concert, close your ears to better hear your friends. Push the tragus, which is that pointy skin-covered cartilage in front of the ear canal, into your ear. Then turn this ear toward your friend. On average, when a person snores, the sound doesn't get louder than 60 decibels. That's as loud as a regular conversation. But sometimes, the noise level can reach 80 decibels. That's as loud as a working food blender. Just like salamanders regrow their tails, humans might be able to regenerate cartilage. That's the rubber-like stuff surrounding your joints. Scientists have recently discovered that cartilage could repair itself. This process is likely to be the most effective at the ankle, not that effective in the knee, and the least effective in the hip. Now, if a person has asnosmia, which is also called smell blindness, they don't distinguish and detect smells. Your eyes never stop moving while taking in visual information. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see the whole picture. These movements go unnoticed because your brain is a great video editor. It stabilizes the images and connects tons of fragments into one smooth video. The liver is the only human organ that can regenerate completely. Even if it's a mere 25% of the original liver weight, the organ can get back to its full size. Your mouth burns when you're snacking on pineapple because while you're eating this fruit, it's eating you back. Well, kind of. Pineapple is the only known food that contains bromelain. That's an enzyme that breaks down proteins. Luckily, your stomach acid knows how to deal with the offending enzyme. Now, we also have bacteria that can produce electricity living in our intestines. These bacteria give off electrons, which creates tiny electrical currents. This might be the bacteria's way to generate energy. Deja vu might actually be something like a brain processing lab. There's a theory claiming that it might happen when your brain is moving information from one part to another. If there's even the tiniest delay in that process, your brain will get the same information twice. In this case, it'll process it as an event that happened before. The DEC2 gene mutation allows people to have just a few hours of sleep a night and still feel great. They don't get tired and never sleep in. On average, such people wake up at 4 or 5 a.m. No more than 5% of the world's population has this feature. Your ears might pop or even hurt when you're on an airplane. You can solve this problem by simply chewing some gum. This opens up your eustachian tube. That's a small passage that connects your throat and your middle ear. Opening this passage helps equalize the pressure in your ears and puts an end to the popping. You can also yawn to open up the eustachian tubes. Your feet are likely to become bigger with time just like your nose and your ears. You see, when people grow older, ligaments and tendons in their feet weaken. This makes the arches flatter, and the feet become wider and longer. Unlike our primate pals, many people still have these foot arches. They help us move. This arch is like a built-in shock absorber for your feet. It's what allows us to bounce. There's another one. It's called the transverse arch running side to side on the top of your foot. Think of it like a bridge that helps keep your foot in shape. Research says this arch is a big deal, too. It's responsible for about 40% of your foot's stiffness. Simply put, it's like the scaffolding that holds your foot together. When scientists snipped the transverse arch, the foot lost a lot of its firmness. But when they cut the bottom arch, it wasn't that dramatic. So, is it a modern human thing? Nope, these arches didn't just pop up yesterday. The transverse arch has been around for 3 million years. The bottom arch showed up about 1.8 million years ago. We might as well continue with another element of our feet before moving up to other parts. Our pinky toes are also more important than they seem. Whether you were born without one or have lost it, you can still walk. 
But pinky ones are important for keeping us on our feet. They provide balance. Inside your foot, you've got 26 bones that team up to make sure you don't topple over. Small toe is a part of this balance work. Our ape ancestors needed their toes to grab, claw, and swing from trees. Today, we've traded our tree climbing skills for comfy couches and binge watches. Okay, let's move up a bit and talk about the appendix. You might think that it's useless, but nope. When a human is in their mommy's belly, this organ starts to do its job. Around the 11th week of development, it starts churning out special cells that produce helpful hormones and compounds. The appendix helps train our immune system's troops, ensuring they're top-notch defenders. It also collects all sorts of foreign substances, aka antigens, from our digestive tract. Yet, as diets evolved, this piece shrank like a deflating balloon. Unlike most other vestigial structures, the appendix isn't always harmless. It can turn into an angry little fireball. By the way, vestigial organs are the ones that have lost their primary ancestral function. These structures mostly lack an apparent purpose. Another famous vestigial example is wisdom teeth. Those are pointless and have been causing us trouble for ages. Yet nearly 95% of us have them. And 90% might even have to deal with the drama of an impacted wisdom tooth at some point. If you don't have them, you might consider yourself lucky. Here's an additional interesting fact about wisdom teeth. Even though your teeth have a mineral softer than what's in shark teeth, new tests show that they're just as resilient. The coating on shark teeth is actually similar in hardness to the enamel on a human wisdom tooth. It's because their surfaces are made of mineral crystals held together by proteins. These prevent them from shattering easily upon impact. So the difference in how we and sharks use our teeth comes down to their design, not their toughness. Anthropologists have examined ancient skeletons. They think our ancestors needed these extra teeth to chew tough stuff, like roots and raw meat. Back then, those extra teeth came in handy. But then, we discovered cooking, and suddenly, our food got softer, and our jaws got smaller. Geneticists have their own take on this subject. It involves a gene called MYH16, which seems to play a role in both brain size and jaw characteristics. Yet, the exact part it played in our evolutionary story is still a bit of a mystery. Now, another pointless thing is the eyelid. Well, not the regular eyelid. You know, that little pink thing hiding in the corner of your eye. Birds and some other furry pals use it to fend off dust and debris trying to mess with their eyes. But in us humans, it's mostly vestigial. Meet the Palmaris longus. About 85% of us still carry it around. Maybe you also have it. You can test it by putting your hand on a flat surface and making your pinky and thumb meet. If you spot a little tendon band doing the limbo in the middle of your wrist, then you've found it. It was there for gripping stuff and swinging around like Tarzan. We can carry on with the grasping trick. Even before you're born, around 16 weeks into your time inside your mom's tummy, you're already practicing your grip. You start by grabbing onto the umbilical cord. When you finally arrive in the world, this reflex helps you hold onto things. Fun fact, small monkeys can hang on one hand for ages, thanks to a similar trick. Yet, we humans lose this super grip when we're around three months old. When you're still in your mother's womb, you also have a mini tail. But as you grow, it disappears, and those tiny vertebrae become your tailbone or coccyx. Humans and our ape cousins don't have tails like other animals. Our ears, too, have vestigial muscles. They help animals hear better and express their feelings. But in humans, these ear muscles don't do much. We figured out other ways to listen and show our emotions. Yet some of us can still wiggle our ears with practice. Surprisingly, toenails also count as a vestigial thing. I mean, they function as the initial line of defense. They protect the body against harmful microorganisms. In our evolutionary journey, we used our fingernails and toenails for defense, digging, and climbing. In the modern world, fingernails still come to our rescue. 
whether it's for peeling fruit or that sweet sensation of scratching an itch. Yet, toenails have retired, but hey, we can apply nail polish to them. For fashion's sake, they certainly work for many people. It's not just humans who have useless limbs or organs. In 1798, an anatomist examined a peculiar bird incapable of flying. He documented his observations. This avian species was none other than an ostrich. Ostriches and cassowaries are just a few examples of birds possessing vestigial wings. Anatomically speaking, these are rudimentary wings, incapable of granting flight to these hefty creatures. Yet, they aren't entirely devoid of function. They serve the purpose of maintaining balance during rapid running. Plus, they elaborate courtship displays, helping birds attract potential mates. Now, when it comes to animals, a lot of them glow, too. Around 76% of ocean animals, including jellyfish, worms, sharks, and sea stars, are bioluminescent. They have a compound called luciferin that reacts with oxygen to create light. And for them, it serves such purposes as stunning predators, attracting prey, or warning others of danger. We humans can glow too. Unfortunately, this glow is super faint. Our eyes can't see it. Our bodies emit light, but it's about a thousand times dimmer than what our eyes can detect. Scientists found that our glow changes throughout the day. It's the faintest in the morning and the brightest in the late afternoon. Our faces glow more than the rest of our bodies. They think it's because our faces get more sun exposure and have melanin, which has components that can boost light production. Some body tricks distinguish us from the rest of the animal kingdom. For instance, do you know that humans are the only animals capable of blushing? It seems we've got the exclusive rights to this rosy-cheeked phenomenon. When we find ourselves in an embarrassing situation, our blood vessels dilate. That's what gives us those blushes. Embarrassment is a pretty complex emotion. It's all about understanding what others think of us. This might be too advanced for other animals. Interestingly, bald uakari monkeys can also blush, but not in the same sense. For them, this is a show of their good health. Speaking of good health, we should honor our gut. Your gut includes the stomach, liver, and more. It's often called the second brain. This second brain has its own nervous system. It has a hundred million messengers. They send info to the rest of your body. Even if the gut-brain connection is cut, it keeps working. It ensures your digestive system functions on its own. You know what? In 10 years from now, you'll be a completely different person. Well, at least your skeleton will be. To reach its adult size, your skeleton went through a process called modeling, which means the development of growth and formation. Turns out it regenerates completely once every 10 years or so. This entire process ensures you always have healthy bone cells, which can support you and provide calcium to your body. And speaking of ways the body regenerates, every second you make 25 million new cells. I'll do the math for you. Okay, that means in about 15 seconds, you'll have made more cells than there are people in the United States. Think about that the next time you feel you haven't been productive enough. Some animals have eyes that need to adapt to hot climates like camels, for example. Their eyes feature a third eyelid, but these sweep across from the corner of each eye. Because their environment is filled with small particles, they need to clean their eyes more frequently than other species. Now, see that little pink thing in the corner of your eye? It's also a third eyelid. Well, a vestige at least. In humans, the third eyelid is unnecessary because it no longer serves its original purpose. Next time you're tuning in to your favorite song, try to pay some attention to your heartbeat. If you listen closely, you'll notice that sometimes your heartbeat may synchronize with the rhythm of the song. Now, not all genres of music have this special ability, but some tunes trigger the release of dopamine, or the happy hormone. This effect may give you a lower heart rate, breathing rate, and blood pressure. And speaking of that healthy ticker of yours, just in case you're wondering, it beats on average about 75 times per minute. This means each year, 
a human heart can pump enough blood to fill an Olympic-sized pool, if that were a thing. What's even more fascinating is that if you were to connect all your blood vessels end-to-end, it would be able to circle the Earth two and a half times. But that's not good for your own health, so don't do that. Your heart can also continue to beat even if it's removed from the body. That's because it has its own internal battery, which allows it to beat as long as it receives oxygen. If you regularly have your nails done at a salon, you've probably noticed you need more appointments for your fingers than your toes. That's because fingernails do grow faster. The definitive scientific answer is still up for debate. But many specialists think it's because fingernails used to be claws, somewhere back in our ancient history. These days, they're flatter and have widened a bit. And it all happened when primates started using tools in their day-to-day lives, like stones and branches. So there was less use for claws. Once they got flatter, it meant nails wouldn't have gotten in the way if primates wanted to use the palms of their hands. As for why fingernails grow faster than toenails, The short answer may be the fact that we use our hands more than your feet. As such, our fingernails are more exposed, and we may have evolved to grow them faster. The more you use a certain part of your body, the more it becomes exposed to damage. So for me, I'm in danger of my mouth falling off. Oh boy. Getting back to our hands, it's about time we give a nice shout-out to our humble pinkies. We don't see them as being really that important since we don't use them for holding objects, eating, or writing. But recent studies have shown that losing the pinky on our dominant hands would have a devastating effect. Specialists haven't gathered enough data to supply specific numbers, but from what they've learned so far, losing our pinky would weaken our grip strength considerably, even if it's the lesser-used finger. Adding the ring finger to that and the effect would be worse for our grip strength. Another recent study done in the UK has shown that only about 40% of people are happy with how their nose looks. Regardless of how you feel about it, the human nose is a real-life superhero. That's because it acts as a heater, filter, and humidifier all at once. Inside each nostril, there are small, shelf-like bones that feature blood vessels. They heat the air up before it reaches other parts of our respiratory system. The mucus that's inside there handles making the air more humid. As for the filtering part, that's why we have nose hairs. Small particles get stuck on these small hairs, which helps prevent pollen, spores, viruses, or bacteria from reaching our lungs. Now, when watching cartoons, we're led to believe that the sound our heart makes is because it's touching its environment while beating. Well, it turns out that sound is actually made by the opening and closing of the heart valves. They're like small doors inside our hearts that open and close to pump blood correctly from one side of the heart to the other. For our bodies to work, blood needs to move at the right time and in the right direction, or else. Now, let's talk teeth. Throughout your entire life, you'll probably spend up to 40 days total just brushing your teeth. And in case you're still wondering, teeth are not in fact bones even though they do have a lot in common. One of the primary differences between bones and teeth is that our bones can regenerate. They are living tissue. Our teeth are not, and they remain permanently damaged once broken. Now here's another shocker. Ooh, we are the only species on this planet to have a chin. There's still some debate about this subject in the scientific community, but one of the reasons why seems to be to make our jaws stronger. As humans have continued to evolve, their teeth and the muscles in their jaws got smaller and smaller. So they needed something to help with increased jaw resistance. Now, most of us have developed some specific traits depending on the area of the globe in which we live. But there is a group of people, specifically those who live in higher altitudes, that develop some pretty cool traits. That's because high-altitude environments come with less oxygen. Not only do these people survive in these locations, but they've adapted so well that they actually thrive. In the Andes Mountains of South America, people have evolved red blood cells that can carry much more oxygen. It makes their overall circulatory system much more efficient. People living in Tibet have to endure similar conditions, but surprisingly, they have adapted differently. 
In Tibet, they can take more breaths so that they can properly oxygenate their bodies. You've probably heard the myth about dreams only lasting a couple of seconds in reality. Turns out that yes, some of them do, but not all dreams are the same. There are a lot of things we don't understand yet about how we dream. What we do know is that they mainly happen during the rapid eye movement or REM stage of sleep. During this time, your brain is more active, about as active as it is when you're awake. And it's named REM because during the sleep stage, your eyes tend to move a lot. Dreams can happen during the other stages of sleep too, but you're less likely to remember them. As for the length of each dream, they can go from a few seconds to even 20 to 30 minutes. Also, you're more likely to remember a dream if you've woken during the REM stage. Most people have 3 to 5 dreams per night, but some people can have up to 7. I know, seems unlikely, but remember, you immediately forget most of what you dream. Just like we have unique fingerprints, we also develop unique tongue prints. Research has shown that those approximately 10,000 taste buds on our tongues are laid out in a -a one-of-a-kind pattern. Truth is, about 80% of what you believe is taste is actually smell. That combination of taste and smell that we perceive is what we come to know as flavor. That's probably because our sense of smell is around 10,000 times more sensitive than our sense of taste. Our mouths have also another cool superpower called mouthfeel. With the help of the somatosensory system, it allows us to sense the texture of our food. The system is activated by physical touches, such as pressure, touch, or vibrations. It's even sensitive to pain and temperature. We also use our tongues to identify the size, form, and texture of food, which is crucial for proper chewing and digestion. Tongues are also good for wagging, sticking out at certain people, and trumpet playing. Check out that buff dude over there with the orange skin. He's been chilling on Mars for a hot minute, which is why he looks like he used the wrong shade of self-tan. You see, all those carotenoids in carrots, sweet potatoes, bell peppers, tomatoes, and pumpkins are protecting him from those UV rays. The more he eats, the more orange he gets. And as for his sturdiness, it's all about that Martian gravity. The gravity here makes us perceive our weight differently. And if you want to be a boss on Mars, you gotta eat heavily. Like, if a person weighs 150 pounds on Earth, it feels like no more than 55 pounds on Mars. So, overeating can help shorten that gravity to weight gap. Mercury is a whole different thing. It's hotter than Georgia asphalt during the day, but colder than Elsa's castle at night. You gotta be made of metal with a high melting point to be able to survive here. But for us regular humans, we'd be toast, literally. Even though Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, Venus is still the hottest one. Life on Venus, more like life on the Sun's evil twin. The temperature here typically hovers around 870 degrees Fahrenheit on average. Surviving at the boiling point of water, or in the extreme heat of Venus, is a challenge for most Earthly species. Only a select few can endure boiling hot temperatures. Others rush to Starbucks to grab an iced latte with the first beams of the spring sun. So no human being can really evolve enough to survive on Venus. The only creatures that could thrive there are probably tardigrades and those weirdos who put hot sauce on everything. You wonder what tardigrades are? Well, those are minuscule and adorable caterpillar-like creatures that possess remarkable durability. They can endure boiling water, the depths of a sea trench, and the frigid, lightless void of space. Recently, tardigrades were included in a scientific study aboard a spacecraft that unfortunately crashed on the moon. Scientists speculate that the tardigrades may have survived the impact. Hey, would you like to turn into this creature and live on Venus? We're done with terrestrial planets. Let's move on to gas giants. Now look at this dude from Saturn. He's got flippers and not arms. He's got small holes with no external ear flaps instead of regular ears. Most of this gas giant is colder than your ex's heart, as the temperature is about minus 220 F. You can't walk on it but you can turn into a snowball or an ice crystal if you're feeling frisky. Things are quite similar on Jupiter, so probably turning into a seal and chilling there is not that bad of an idea. At least you can live there rent-free. And don't even get me started on Neptune and Uranus. These guys are ice giants with no solid surface, so those sharp-clawed dudes you see in movies? Yeah, they don't exist. Plus, these two ain't exactly hospitable to life. I'll stick to my sweet potatoes on Mars. Thank you very much.
The human body is this perfectly balanced machine, right? Well, not when I'm using it. Normally, all its parts work seamlessly together to keep us thriving and, well, alive. Each of our organs is essential for our day-to-day activities, from breathing, walking, talking, and coming up with bright ideas that push humanity forward. But are they really essential? Do we really need all those body parts? Or are some of them just ancient relics that we just got stuck with in this weird game of evolution? Take wisdom teeth, for example. Nah, somebody already (laughs) took mine. Yeah, they're those pairs of teeth stuck in the back of your mouth you often have to go to the dentist for. They're also known as third molars, and while they can be used to chew food, a lot of people think they're just unnecessary. And get this, around 22% of people worldwide don't even have all four of them. When they do grow in, they're the most likely to become impacted, which means they get stuck in the jawbone sideways and can't properly come through the gums. It's all because our jaws are often too small to accommodate these extra guys. Some smart scientists think that's because we've evolved to have smaller jaws over time. Recent evidence also shows that what we eat as kids might also be to blame, but it's hard to know for sure. Apparently, munching on hard-to-chew foods like raw veggies and nuts can actually stimulate jaw growth, while eating soft processed foods can kind of stunt it. And that leaves little space for our back teeth to come in and, you know, do their thing. Will they disappear altogether in the future? I guess we human mammals will just have to wait and see. Now let's talk about the vomeral nasal organ, or as I like to call it, the nose's secret instrument. You see, rodents and other mammals have this awesome ability to communicate with each other using chemical signals called pheromones. And guess what? They have a special organ called the vomeral nasal organ, or VNO, that helps them detect these pheromones. Here's where it gets interesting. While most adult humans have something resembling a VNO in their nose, it turns out that it's basically a useless remnant. Neuroscientists even say that if you look at the anatomy of this organ, you won't see any cells that resemble those of similar organs from other mammals. Also, this organ in humans doesn't seem to be communicating with the brain either. Now, it's not all bad news. Even though the human VNO is pretty useless, it looks like it still might respond to some pheromones. Will humans keep this organ on their evolutionary to-do list? For now, I'd place it in the maybe pile. Now, here's a tale. Animals that feature tails need these structures for a lot of things. Some need it for balance, others for navigation, while some need it to attract potential partners. But did you know that when we're just a few weeks old in our mother's belly, we actually have tails too? That's right, we have a whole little tail complete with vertebrae. As we develop, that tail magically disappears, and we're left with our trusty tailbone. Humans and apes are unique in that we don't have tails, unlike other primates. It's a mystery why apes lost their tails, but we can all agree that it makes us stand out in a crowd. However, once in a blue moon, a human is born with a little vestigial tail. Cute, right? Well, don't get too excited, because these tails don't have vertebrae and can sometimes be associated with a tricky condition of the spine. Either way, these tails are usually harmless and can be easily removed with a quick surgery. And let's be honest, it's not like we're going to miss it. After all, who needs a tail when you have arms and legs to get around? Plus, can you imagine trying to find pants that fit with a tail sticking out the back? Not a good look. There's little to no chance humans will end up needing tails in the future, so I'm guessing the tailbones are bye-bye in future generations. Humans also have a funny little fold of membrane in the inner corner of the eyes, called the plica semilunaris. It's basically what's left of a third eyelid, which is still found in some animals, like gorillas and other primates. But here's the funny thing. Even our close relatives, the chimpanzees, have this little fold that appears to be useless too. So we're not alone in this eye quirkiness. Speaking of unusual membranes, they serve a variety of functions in different animals, such as protecting the eye from dirt and moisture, or hiding the iris from predators. Some species can even see through their transparent membranes when they're underwater or underground. 
Now, the reasons why we humans lost our third eyelid is still a bit of a mystery. Maybe changes in our habitat and eye physiology made it unnecessary. Or maybe we just evolved to be too cool for a third eyelid. Who knows? With or without vestigial organs, it's interesting to imagine what humans might look like in the future. Many organs have become obsolete because of our lifestyle changes. Care to have a peek into what we might look like in the future? And in the same vein, or artery, have you heard of the concept of text claw? It's where you spend so much time typing on your phone or laptop that your hand starts to cramp up like a claw. And that's just one of the physical changes that could happen to us if we don't take care of our bodies in this tech-heavy world. But it's not just our hands that are affected. We could end up with 90-degree elbows from constantly holding our devices at that angle, and even a smaller brain from all the distractions and information overload. Now I know what you're thinking, we just can't give up technology and go back to the Stone Age. And you're right, we don't have to. But we do need to be aware of the potential negative effects and take steps to reduce their damage. That's why a team of designers put their creative efforts together to present Mindy, a future human whose body has physically changed due to the constant and never-ending use of smartphones, laptops, and other types of maniacal devices. While Mindy's exaggerated changes may not be in our future, the concerns behind them are real. So what can we do? Well, one suggestion is to take regular breaks from our screens and stretch our legs a little. Maybe even encourage some office yoga or dance parties to get the blood flowing. We don't have to give up technology completely, but we do need to be mindful of its effects on our bodies and minds. Many years in the future, we might even get smaller in size. One scientist reckons that if we were smaller, our bodies would need less energy, which would come in super handy in our increasingly crowded planet. It's funny to think about how different our lives are now compared to when we were hunter-gatherers. Back then, we only had to interact with a handful of people each day. But now, remembering people's names is a super important trait, and it might even be something we grow to become better at. Or technology might actually play a role in our evolution. Scientists believe that we could one day have implants in our brains that help us remember people's names. It's like having a biological phone book directly in your body. Wouldn't that be cool? Eh, who knows? Maybe in the future, we'll even have visible technology as part of our appearance. Imagine having an artificial eye that can see different colors and visuals. And don't even get me started on what we might look like if we colonize Mars. With the lower gravity, our bodies could change in all sorts of ways. We might have longer arms and legs, or even insulating body hair like our Neanderthal ancestors. It's hard to pinpoint what we might look like in the future without very precise data to back the models up. But it's fair to say these changes will be interesting, to say the least. As for me, well, it's too late to say the least. I've said over 1,400 words here already. Hey, not to freak you out or anything, but every second, your body creates 25 million new cells. I'll do the math for you. That means that in about 15 seconds, you'll have produced more cells than there are people in the United States. Think about that next time you feel you haven't been productive enough. It may account for only 2% of our body mass, but our brains actually take up 20% of our blood supply and oxygen. Our brains can also produce enough energy to supply a light bulb. That is, when we're awake. Ever thought about what the largest human organ is? It's your skin and is thickest on the palms of your hands and soles of your feet. I know, I know, I hate dusting too. But you are particularly responsible for that layer of fluff on your TV screen, you know. Every human being sheds about 600,000 particles of skin every hour. And most of the dust around your house is actually composed of that. So yes, we're all rather flaky. These days, it's considered more of a beauty mark. But the reason why people are born with a cupid's bow is actually quite intriguing. As our features start to develop before we're even born, it appears that the cupid's bow is actually the place where our face, well, zips up. The right side of the face and the left side of the face, that is. While in humans, it may not be that obvious, 
If you look at your dog's nose, you'll see it has a straight vertical line just under the nostrils. That's right, dogs have this zip too. Did you know you were born with more bones than you have today? At birth, we have somewhere around 300 bones, but as we age, some of them fuse together. That's why in adulthood, we end up having about 200 bones. Although your teeth are technically part of your skeletal system, they're not actually bones. They do look sort of similar and do share some characteristics, like being the hardest element in your body. Why the misconception, though? Well, it's mostly because both teeth and bones contain calcium. To be a bit more specific, about 99% of the body's calcium is in your bones and teeth. The remaining calcium is in your bloodstream. So what makes them different, you might ask? It's in how the bones and teeth heal and how you should take care of them. While bones can repair and heal themselves, your teeth aren't able to do that. That's why we have dentists. We don't only have unique fingerprints, our tongues are one of a kind as well. Research has shown that those approximately 10,000 taste buds on our tongues are laid out in a unique pattern, specific for each one of us. About 80% of what you believe is taste is actually smell. The combination of taste and smell that we perceive is what we come to know as flavor. It's probably because our sense of smell is around 10,000 times stronger than our sense of taste. So, the next time you're tuning in your favorite song, try to pay some attention to your heartbeat. Do you hear that? Yep, that's right. While listening to some music, your heartbeat will sync with the rhythm of the song. And speaking of that healthy ticker of yours, just in case you're wondering, it beats on average about 75 times per minute. This means that in any given year, a human heart can pump enough blood to fill an Olympic-sized pool. What's even more fascinating is that if you were to connect all your blood vessels end-to-end, you'd be able to circle the Earth four times. But that would really hurt, so don't try that. We are the only species on this planet to have a chin. There's still some debate around this subject in the scientific community, but one of the reasons seems to be to make our jaws stronger. As humans have continued to evolve, their teeth and the muscles in their jaws got smaller and smaller. So they needed something to help with increased jaw resistance. That transparent part of your eye is called the cornea, and it helps the light go through. It's also the only part of your body that isn't connected to any blood supply. Why? Because it's especially designed to get its oxygen straight from the surrounding atmosphere. If you took out all the fat found in a healthy human body, it would be enough to make 7 bars of soap. We also produce enough saliva in our lifetimes to fill two swimming pools. Great expectorations! Ever wondered how much we actually eat during our whole lifetimes? I'll spare you the math. An average-sized person eats nearly 66,000 pounds of food throughout the whole course of their lifetime. How much is that for scale? About six elephants. And that ain't peanuts. Each of us carries around 4 pounds of bacteria on average at any given time in our bodies. But hey, don't go running to the doctor just yet. Most of that bacteria is actually good and have specific functions in the human body, like digestion and our immune systems. If you want to have an accurate depiction of your height, make sure you measure yourself in the morning. That's because you're about 0.4 inches taller right when you wake up. Trust me, it isn't magic. It's merely because, throughout the day, the soft cartilage between your spinal bones gets squashed down and compressed, making you seem shorter by the time you go to bed. We know that we have some sort of energy moving around our bodies, so we actually do emit a tiny amount of light. It's too weak for our own eyes to see, though, but if you think about it, you're actually glowing as we speak. The humorist and author Mark Twain once said, Man is the only animal that blushes, or needs to. How true. But not all humans can blush, and those that do blush to different degrees. Is there some sort of evolutionary reason for why we blush? It seems so. Blushing is a way for us to communicate without using any words. Just like dogs wag their tails when they're happy or excited. So basically, blushing can be translated to, I'm embarrassed. Similar to how we shiver when we're cold. If the human eye was a camera, it would have about 576 megapixels. Our vision of the world changes throughout our lives. As soon as we're born, we see the world upside down for a bit. 
Our brain is programmed to show the inverted image formed on our retina by the convex eye lens. But that doesn't kick in immediately after birth. Hey, I'm sure you enjoy that weekly cardio and weightlifting, but the strongest muscle in the human body is definitely not the one you've been working on. It's actually in your jaws. Your jaws are designed similarly to a nutcracker. Why? So you can get powerful bites with as little energy as possible. The fastest muscle is located in your eyes. That's probably how we came up with the expression in the blink of an eye for when something happens really quickly. Did you know that your nose comes with a built-in reset feature? It happens when you sneeze. Sneezing is basically your nose's way of getting rid of all the bad particles it has inhaled up to a certain point. If you think that's bad, it's not. Did you also think your pinky finger is something weak and pretty much useless? Well, it actually packs up to 50% of the strength in your hand. We still haven't figured out precisely why people yawn. Now, we aren't the only creatures to do it. Baboons, guinea pigs, and the Siamese fighting fish yawn to warn other animals to stay away. Penguins seem to yawn during courtship rituals, and snakes yawn at times after a good meal. Boy, there's a happy snake. Some theories suggest it helps us get more oxygen in, while others indicate that it helps with regulating our body temperatures. Either way, we still don't know for sure. Our ears and noses are the only organs that continue to grow throughout our lifetimes. Our eyes stay more or less the same size as we grow up. By the time we're 3 months old, our corneas should technically reach their full size. You have as much hair as a monkey. (laughs) Now, I don't mean to be insulting, but your fingerprints are not unique. You can hear better after you cover your ears. Now, can these statements be true, or are they nothing but myths? When a person is lying, their own nose can give them away. Can it be true? Yep. Researchers from the University of Granada have discovered that when a person tells a lie, the temperature around their nose and in the inner corners of their eyes rises. This phenomenon got named the Pinocchio effect. Hey, how about this one? People can have as many hairs on their body as chimpanzees. Can you believe this? Surprisingly, this one's true too. The hair count of a person and a chimp, or any other ape of our size, is approximately the same. The only difference is that human body hair is quite fine and often colorless. This makes it hard to see the sheer number of hairs. Your lungs are identical. It sounds reasonable, but is it true? Well, it's nothing but a myth. Your left lung consists of two lobes, while your right lung is divided into three parts. Plus, the lung on the left is a bit smaller. It has to, to make room for your heart. By the way, your lungs also contain around 1,500 miles of airways. It's more than half the distance between New York and Los Angeles. There are also more than 300 million alveoli, tiny balloon-shaped air sacs, in your lungs. I bet you've heard this one before. Carrots can make your eyesight better. True or myth? Unfortunately, this idea isn't true. Neither can carrots get you better nighttime vision. Carrots are indeed packed with vitamin A. It benefits your body and protects your eyes. But even these veggies can't save you from wearing glasses if you need them. Some people sneeze when looking at the sun. Now, do they? Yes, that's true. About 25% of people have an interesting reaction to sunlight. They sneeze. This phenomenon even has its own name. The photic sneeze reflex. Shaving body hair makes it grow darker and thicker. Is it the truth? Don't worry, that's just a myth. It might look as if your body hair has changed in thickness, rate of growth, or even color after getting shaved. But it's just an illusion. Shaving makes the tips of hair follicles blunt. That's why they look rougher and darker than usual. 
But once your hair grows in again, it'll start to look the same as it did before you shaved it. You have unique fingerprints. Ah, this one must be true, right? The problem with this statement is that scientists can't prove that each set of fingerprints is absolutely unique. It does seem to people, but it's impossible to check. And while this is improbable, people with identical fingerprints can actually turn out to be real. People have more than five senses. Is it an appealing myth or reality? There are five most obvious senses. Vision, smell, touch, hearing, and taste. But how about thermoception, the sense of heat? Nociception, the perception of pain? Or the perception of your body awareness? Proprioception, close your eyes and touch your nose. Got it? That's proprioception and action. This list can be much longer. Some experts state people have from 21 to 53 senses. Your fingers actually get pruny after you spend too much time in the water for your safety. Is it true? What's your bet? Scientists believe so, but first things first, pruny fingers are caused by narrowing blood vessels. When you stay in the water for a long time, your nervous system makes your blood vessels shrink. Your body sends the blood away from that area, and this loss of blood makes your vessels thinner. The skin starts folding over them, forming those funny wrinkles. Scientists aren't 100% sure, but they think this process occurs to help you have a better grip when your hands and feet are wet. People only use 10% of their brains. Oh, how I wish it was just a myth. And it is! Apparently, you use almost 100% of your brain every day. This organ is active all the time, even when you're asleep. When you're snoozing, your frontal cortex, which is responsible for higher-level thinking, and the areas that help you sense your surrounding, are still doing their job. For some people, the world is much brighter than for others. Hmm, how come? That's actually true! There are three kinds of cone cells in the average person's eyes. These cones help to recognize the colors in the blue, red, and green spectrums. Thanks to them, most people can distinguish around 1 million different shades. But those with technochromacy have four cones in their eyes. This feature allows them to see up to 100 million different hues. This vision anomaly is extremely rare, and women have it more often than men. But do you know the funniest thing about this? Most people with tetrachromacy don't even realize they see the world brighter than others. Sometimes you can hear better after closing your ears. Well, it seems counterproductive, but can it be true? Indeed, if you're in a loud place, for example, in a club or at a concert, you should close your ears to hear your friends better. Push the tragus which is the pointy skin-covered cartilage in front of your ear canal, into your ear. Then turn this ear toward your friend. Voila! You can prevent yourself from sneezing. Oh, that would be very convenient. But maybe it's just a myth. It's true. If you don't want to sneeze, press the skin on the bridge of your nose with your fingers. When you do it, your brain receives an alarm signal. It immediately puts the brakes on all other processes, including the sneezing reflex. Okay, you're gonna finish these five episodes of your favorite series now and catch up on sleep later, but can you? Unfortunately, no. You can try to catch up on sleep at the weekend or take lots of afternoon naps during the week, but it won't help. Your body doesn't work this way. If you didn't have enough sleep the night before or went to bed really late, sleeping until noon won't save the day. Even worse, too much sleep will make you feel groggy. Some people have more ribs than others. Is it a myth? Nah, it's true. Most people have 12 pairs of ribs, which makes 24 in total. 
But 1 in 200 people has an additional 25th rib. It's called cervical and forms at the base of the neck above the collarbone. It can grow on the left, right, or even both sides of the body. Those people who have extra ribs most likely know nothing about this modification. That's because an extra rib rarely forms completely and can look like a thin strand of tissue. In this case, you won't see it even on an x-ray. You should wait for at least a half an hour after eating before you go swimming. Well, it sounds reasonable, but is it true? Ah, that's just a myth. The general idea behind this claim is that eating a large meal makes your blood flow towards your stomach to help with the digestion process. At the same time, your muscles don't get enough blood, which leads to cramps. But in reality, swimming right after having eaten something isn't dangerous at all. Your blood doesn't get diverted enough for it to cause any serious problems. Some people's snores can get louder than a working kitchen appliance. What do you think about this? Well, on average, when a person snores, the sound doesn't get louder than 60 decibels, which is as loud as a regular conversation. But sometimes, the noise level can reach 80 decibels, and that's as loud as a working food blender. Not all people have round pupils. Can it be true? Yup. Two people out of every 10,000 have an unusually shaped pupil. Most commonly, it resembles a keyhole. This eye disorder is called coloboma. Interestingly, some people with this condition don't have any problems with their vision. You may have this rare body feature already and not know about it since sometimes even an x-ray can't spot it. Most of us have 12 pairs of rib bones, which means we were born with 24 ribs. There are some folks, though, that actually have 25 ribs. Only 1 in 200 people have this rare extra feature, and it's called a cervical rib. It generally appears above the first rib, right at the base of the neck and above the collarbone. It's nothing to worry about, though. Most of the time, they're unnoticeable. And if ever painful, they can be safely removed. Do you know how huskies can sometimes have their eyes in different colors? Some people come equipped with this rare feature too. The medical term for it is heterochromia. The name comes from the ancient Greek word heteros, which translates to different, and chroma, which means color. People with this condition can either have complete, central, or partial heterochromia. The complete type means that the person has two completely different colored eyes, say, one brown and one green. Two different colors in the same eye are what specialists call central heterochromia. A person with a partial heterochromia has just a portion of their eye of a different color. You can either be born with this condition or get it, say, after an injury. Still, it's extremely rare. Less than 200,000 people are diagnosed with it in the US. Either way, let's face it, it does look pretty cool. Speaking of eye color, Want to try guessing what the rarest one is? I'll spare you the Google search. It's gray. Blue eyes may have been your first thought, and they are indeed already pretty rare. Only around 8 to 17% of the world's population have this eye color. When it comes to gray eyes, though, they're even more special. Less than 1% of people have them. This rare body feature is caused by a lower level of melanin in the eye's layers. If you're interested in meeting someone with gray eyes, your best chance is in Eastern and Northern Europe. Even rarer eye colors are red or violet, but these can sometimes be the result of different health conditions. There are people out there who have the superpower of seeing 100 million different colors without the help of any fancy gadgets. We see colors thanks to some cells in our eyes named cones. Most of us have three types of cones to help translate what we see into the colors that our brain is able to understand. However, specialists think that there's a small group of people called tetrachromats who have four types of these cones. So far, researchers have only been able to identify women with this condition. That little teardrop-shaped ball hanging in the back of your neck, you know, the one that helps with swallowing your food, is called a uvula. 
The name comes from Latin and translates to little grape. Surprisingly enough, around 2% of people are born with a bifid uvula, which means that this indispensable organ in them is either split or forked. You sure can surprise others with this cool feature of yours at parties. Joking aside though, people with this bifid uvula may sometimes have trouble eating, drinking, and speaking. They might also have issues with digesting food. Their speech may also sound a bit unusual, but this depends on how much the uvula is split. This particular body feature might not be the perfect trait when going on vacation, but it does allow people to do more with less sleep. They say that famous people like Nikola Tesla, Margaret Thatcher, and Winston Churchill had this super rare feature. This gene, called the DEC2 gene, helps with regulating our circadian rhythms. Those are the natural biological clocks that let us know when we should be sleeping or eating by making us sleepy or hungry. A person with this rare mutation can basically go through a normal sleep cycle in less time. They can feel rested even if they slept for only 4 to 5 hours. That's one superpower I definitely want to have. How about a gene mutation that gives you superhero-like bones? They're basically unbreakable. It also makes your skin less prone to aging. Yep, looks like with this feature, you can walk away from accidents unharmed and even withstand the flow of time. Some other people out there come with a very attractive feature, but it can go unnoticed, at least at first glance. They have a little something called distichiasis, which basically means an extra row of eyelashes. Just in case you're wondering about the medical aspects too, it results from a genetic mutation of a certain gene. As beautiful as it may sound, people with that extra eyelash layer can experience some pretty unpleasant sensations in their eyes and, in some cases, even have problems with their vision. If spun glass hair doesn't ring a bell, know that it is, in fact, a condition you might have. I know it's pretty self-explanatory, but just FYI, it causes frizzy and dry hair. It's basically so unmanageable that you literally can't comb it. It also tends to grow out from the scalp in all directions. As for coloring, it comes in either bright blonde or silver. Most of us have hair strands that are cylindrical. People with this condition have triangular or heart-shaped strands or even flat altogether. It's extremely rare with only 100 confirmed cases, but it does become more manageable with age. Most of us humans have evolved to have some specific traits depending on the area of the globe that we live in. But there is a group of people, specifically those that live in higher altitudes, that developed some pretty cool traits. Let me explain. High altitude environments come with less oxygen. Not only do these people survive in these locations, but they've adapted to actually thrive out there. For example, those living in the Andes Mountains of South America have red blood cells that can carry much more oxygen. It makes their overall circulatory system a lot more efficient. People living in similar conditions in other parts of the world have also adapted in their own way. They're able to take more breaths so that they can properly supply their bodies with oxygen. This one is very important when it comes to looks, but means little in terms of a person's overall health. I'm talking about pajeboldism. Those who have it lack melanocytes, those cells that produce hair pigment in some parts of their hair. It's most common above the forehead in front of their hairline, but it can also appear on the eyebrows or eyelashes. Folks who have it are born with this condition and carry it throughout their entire lifetime. If you really want to get rid of it, there's always hair dye available, but I personally think it looks super cool. We all know cilantro really isn't everyone's cup of tea. I don't know about you, but it tastes like soap to me. It turns out it's not actually a preference, but rather a gene that causes the plant to have this vile taste instead. A study performed on a group of about 30,000 people revealed that you can find a particular gene variant in people who say that cilantro tastes soapy. This gene has more to do with the odor of the plant than the taste itself. If you're one of those people but really want to give cilantro a chance, either way, there's a small trick you can try. Or ask the people that cook the meals in your household. You can always crush the herb before using it in dishes. Why does that help? 
Well, because with crushing, the chemicals that are responsible for the soapy taste are broken down and are less likely to taste unpleasant. Most people are sure that humans only have five senses, but that's not entirely true. Taste, touch, smell, sight, and hearing aren't the only ones we have. Scientists claim that people have between nine and 20 senses in total. These include thermoception, the sense of warmth, equilibrioception, the sense of balance. There's also the sense of time, although not everyone seems to have that last one. We used to think that there were just eight different blood types, but in reality, there are over 30 known blood group systems. Here on the bright side, our favorite blood group is B positive. Get it? For every pound of fat you gain, you generate one mile of new blood vessels to supply oxygen and nutrients to your body. Your stomach produces a new lining every six days to avoid digesting itself. Nerve cells transmit 1,000 nerve impulses a second. They travel between 1 and 268 miles per hour. Our DNA contains 100,000 viruses. Scientists have discovered one that goes back 100 million years. Your body emits visible light. You're the brightest at 4 p.m., and your glow is the least visible at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, this glowing is 1,000 times less intense than what your eyes can see. Sweat is mostly water mixed with proteins, sugars, ammonia, and a lot of other stuff. It even contains tiny amounts of trace metals like copper, zinc, nickel, iron, and so on. What makes sweat taste salty is the sodium it contains. Plus, the more salt you eat, the saltier your sweat is. Your body's trying to get rid of the excess, and the fastest way is to sweat it out. If you walked two miles per hour, you'd have to walk for 20 hours straight to lose one pound. And it would take you 518 days and eight hours to circle the equator. Earwax isn't actually wax. It contains fat, skin cells, sweat, and dirt. Your brain gets three times bigger over the first year of life and reaches its full maturity when you're 25. 60% of it is fat. Your brain generates around 23 watts of electrical power which is enough to run a small light bulb. Humans can't really multitask. Your brain can't perform more than one action at the same time. It switches between them, which doesn't save time as you might think, but increases the possibility you'll do something wrong and makes the process longer. When you have an exam to take or you're at work trying to focus on an important task, try chewing gum. Research showed it can help you stay concentrated for longer on tasks that require your full attention. Studies even say that it's a better test aid than caffeine. There's nothing special in the gum, but the act of chewing wakes your brain up. The effect doesn't last long though, just for 20 minutes. Embryos develop fingerprints at three months. Your bones are four times harder than concrete. The strongest bone in your body is the femur. It can support up to 30 times the weight of a grown-up person. Even crazier is that our bones are made up of composite material, meaning they're both hard and elastic at the same time. Sunburn is the result of radiation exposure. When your body's natural defense mechanism gets overwhelmed trying to fight UV rays, a toxic reaction occurs that results in sunburn. Goosebumps are an evolutionary reflex left over from our ancestors. The release of adrenaline made their hair stand up, and they look scarier to approaching predators. Your body produces one to three pints of saliva every day. It helps you digest food and fights off infections. You also have a lot of bacteria in your mouth. Yeah, that's right. The average amount of bacteria in a person's mouth is almost the same as the number of people living on Earth. That's hard to digest. Each human has roughly 150,000 hairs on their head. Every strand grows around one half an inch per month. If we added the growth from each hair, it would measure the distance of 10 miles in just one year. Your hair is also a lot stronger than you think. A single strand can hold three ounces, which is the weight of an apple. If we combine the strength of all the hair on your head, it could support the weight of two elephants. Hey, let's try it. The beating sound your heart makes is the clap of valve leaflets opening and closing. Your heart doesn't replicate its cells unless you have an injury. Your corneas are the only part of your body that don't get blood. They get oxygen directly through the air. When you're sitting or standing upright, it's easier for you to recall some positive memories that make you feel good. 
Some believe it's because sitting up with your back flat boosts blood flow and your brain gets more oxygen, which helps it function better. The man who has the deepest voice in the world, and that's definitely not me, can produce sounds that humans, including him, can't hear at all. But elephants can hear those sounds. Veins look blue because light has to go through layers of skin and fat to reach them. Your skin scatters a lot of the red portion of white light before it reflects the blood. This leaves only the blue light to bounce back to your eyes. A person who has anosmia is unable to detect smells. Phantosmia is the opposite condition, when someone smells an odor that isn't actually there. The human brain has 100 billion neurons. It's 73% water, and the same is true about the heart. That's why if your brain loses even 2% of its liquid, you start to feel tired. It also makes your memory worse, shortens your attention span, and puts a dampener on your mood. The earliest known person to have had blue eyes lived in the Stone Age, 7,000 years ago. Your right kidney is probably smaller and sits lower down than your left kidney to make room for your liver. By the way, your brain makes sure you don't drink too little or too much water. After you swallow some liquid, your mouth and throat start to fire signals to your brain, telling it to stop drinking. Otherwise, you'd keep gulping down water for the entire 10 to 60 minutes it takes the liquid to get to your cells. Your eyes can see something for a mere 13 milliseconds, and your brain will already process this image. The average blink lasts from 100 to 400 milliseconds. Even though the tongue isn't the strongest muscle in your body, it never gets tired. That's because of the way it's built. It's made up of eight interwoven muscles. The tongue is the only muscle with ends not connected to bone. Other muscles join two bones at both ends because that's how we pull and make a motion. There are around 700 different species of bacteria in your mouth. Over 6 billion of them live there. Your skin is your largest organ. It can cover the surface area of two bath towels. It accounts for around 16% of body weight and is around 22 square feet. If you typed 60 words per minute for 8 hours a day, it would take you 50 years to type the human genome. You get tired pretty quickly when you're out in the heat. This happens because your body is trying really hard to keep itself cool, which puts a lot of extra work on it. So you get exhausted and tired, even if you don't do anything physically demanding. Your body has 78 organs, but only 5 of them are essential for survival. The brain, liver, kidney, lungs, and heart. Oh, the phone's ringing. Must be something urgent. At 11 p.m. Only, all the gadgets in the house are silent. It's your ears that are ringing. You can also hear some hissing, whistling, buzzing, and even roaring. But all this noise doesn't have an external source. That's why it's known as phantom sounds. They can occur in one or both ears, constantly or from time to time. They're usually most noticeable at night, when nothing distracts you. Women have more taste buds on the surface of their tongues than men do. That's one of the reasons why 35% of ladies and only 15% of guys are super tasters. Those are people who feel flavors more strongly than others. Left-handed people usually prefer to chew on the left side. And right-handed people, well, you guessed it, chew on the right. Even if your fingerprints are damaged, they'll grow back in the same unique pattern. When breathing, a single lung only uses 5% of the oxygen you've inhaled. Now, nobody really knows why we need the appendix, but it's always at the back of the book. Wait, wrong appendix. Some researchers claim the human appendix helped our ancestors process the tree bark and whatever they were eating at that time. As we have a way more balanced diet now, the appendix can disappear from our bodies without any consequences. Another purposeless thing in our bodies is the wisdom teeth. Yeah, they used to come in handy when dentists didn't exist, but now we can ideally make do without them. Your brain will grow by roughly 2% if you venture into space. Under normal gravity, it's thought that fluid in the brain naturally moves downwards when we stand upright. But there is evidence that microgravity prevents this, resulting in fluid accumulation in the brain and skull. When you age, your brain is gradually reducing in size. By age 75, it's much smaller than at age 30, and it starts shrinking at 40. 
It happens to everyone, so you just have to go with it and keep your brain busy and nimble. If you stare into your eyes in the mirror, you'll see a small pink circle settled in the corner of your eye. This is your third eyelid. Useless for us, but valuable for animals, like birds, to keep dust and scattered debris from getting into their eyes. This might sound familiar to you if you've heard of natural selection. In short, natural selection keeps body parts throughout generations, but some of them are harmful, so they're phased out in the next generation and others that aren't staying, just like the third eyelid. Not only your brain shrinks as you get older, you too shrink dramatically. The bones get more brittle, the backbone gets compressed. It works vice versa too. When you rest at night, your bones kind of relax too, so you wake up taller than when you went to bed last night. Our ears help us keep the balance, so hearing isn't their only duty. Our vestibular system occupies the inner ear. Canals in your inner ear contain fluid and tiny sensors that look somewhat like hairs, helping you keep your balance. As for hairs, only a few body parts aren't covered with them. These are palms, the soles of the feet, and lips. Hairs grow even in the belly button. Their purpose is to catch lint. Mine does a great job. And not only lint, our belly buttons have an entire animal encyclopedia in them, with a range of about 70 different bacteria. Some of them can also be found in soil in Japan, and even some bacteria typical for polar ice caps. See? You have a whole naval expedition going on and didn't even know it. Only about 43% of you is you. You're over 50% tiny little creatures that mainly live in your gut and other body parts without ever leaving it. Still, even though your cells are fewer than microbial ones, there are, on average, about 100 trillion of them in you. With this in mind, your genes are less than half of what you consist of. If you take all the microbes dwelling within your body and count their genes, it'll be anywhere from 2 to 20 million genes and their combinations. If you sleep, and I recommend that you do, it doesn't mean all of your body sleeps. In fact, sometimes your brain has to work even harder when you're asleep. It needs to process tons of information, and reports usually take time. One thing that indeed rests while you're sleeping is your nose. You won't smell anything nasty in your sleep. The thing is that your sense of smell deactivates at night. If there's some terrible smell in your bedroom, you won't even be bothered. Scientists used to believe we could distinguish around 10,000 smells. Nope. Recent research showed that people could indicate more than a trillion smells. We also remember them better than anything else, and odors can even evoke some distant memories. Meanwhile, our strongest and most emotional memories are usually fake. It's the way the central memory works. It gives us the confidence to believe everything we remember is real, even though we should be confident about fewer details. Now, you don't mind if I call you a mammal, do you? Well, among us mammals, only humans can always walk on two hind limbs and keep that posture for their entire lives. You may want to say that kangaroos or gorillas move in the same way, but kangaroos use their tail as a third leg, and gorillas use the help of their long arms to keep balance. Your bones take part in metabolism, too. Since they mainly consist of calcium, when there's not enough of this element in your blood, bones start shedding it into the bloodstream, balancing your body. And vice versa, when there's too much calcium in your blood, it goes into the bones to be stored for later. Our height, shape of our body, and skin color depend a lot on where our ancestors used to live. But we can adapt to new conditions even within our lifespan. For example, if you move from the plains to the mountains, you'll eventually develop more red blood cells to compensate for the lack of oxygen. And naturally, if you drive from a colder climate to a hotter and sunnier one, your skin will change pigmentation slightly to adapt. Our lifespan is programmed within our cells. They constantly renew and divide, but they have a sort of internal timer that stops at some point. Some cells also stop reproducing sooner than others. On average, cells cease dividing when we reach the age of 100. If we find a way to trick ourselves into turning off the timer, we could potentially live forever. But we'd be a huge mass of wrinkles by then. <laughs> body fat acts as insulation material, energy reserve, and shock absorber. Your body sends the most fat into your waist region because that's where your internal organs are. 
If something happens to you, this layer of fat might as well protect those organs from serious damage. Your skull isn't a single bone. It consists of 22 different bones, many of which are fused to protect your brain. The mandible, or the lower jaw, is the only skull bone that's only attached to your head with connective tissues and muscles. This is what makes it so mobile. You can move it in any direction you like. And the smallest bone in your whole body is inside your ear. It's called the stapes, and it's no larger than a grain of rice. Some of the strongest muscles in your body aren't in your arms or legs. They're in your head. The masseter is the primary muscle responsible for chewing, and it needs to be the strongest for you to eat normally. And you know those muscles that allow you to move your ears? Those are temporalis, located above your temples. They also help you to chew your food. We've got two really fast muscles. They control the eyelids opening. In fact, they're the fastest muscles in our body. Eyes are fragile and need protection. So when the reflex is triggered, these muscles shut the eyes within less than a tenth of a second. We recognize only purple-blue, green-yellow, and yellow-red colors. Everything else is a combination of these three. It's impossible to calculate how many of these combinations the human eye sees because every single person has slight vision differences. But it's about 1 million combinations on average. Your stomach has an impressive capacity, holding up to a half a gallon of liquids, a whole large bottle of Coke. It's pretty hard to estimate how much hard food you can squeeze into your stomach since the food is processed with your teeth before it gets down there. There's not enough room for a whole turkey, but who knows, probably a good-sized chicken might fit it. And hey, like my grandmother said, there's always room for ice cream. Now, show me where your stomach with all that cola, chicken, and ice cream is. If you're pointing at your tummy, nope, it's up there, hidden in between your ribs. Your tummy is full of intestines. Your body actually glows! It emits a super faint light that's at its strongest at around 3 to 4 p.m. The sad news is that this glowing is 1,000 times less intense than what your eyes can see. Humans are the only animals that have chins. Even our closest genetic relatives, gorillas and chimps, lack this small piece of bone that extends forward from the jaw. Their lower jaws slant down and back from their front teeth. Scientists still haven't figured out this mystery. The opinions about why people are made this way differ. Some researchers think chins help us chew our food. Others are sure they have something to do with speaking. A few of us think it's simply a special place to grow a goatee. The most abundant element in the human body is oxygen, at 65%. But it also contains lithium, cobalt, gold, and uranium. The rarest one of all is radium. On average, Humans yawn 20 times a day, partially spontaneously, for example, when you're tired, but sometimes when someone yawns near you. Scientists think it could be a thing called social mirroring. Usually, when animals mimic each other, they recognize some action as useful, so they decide to do it too. With humans, it happens when someone crosses legs, laughs, smiles at you, or... Your stomach acid breaks down the foods you eat and turns them into easy-to-digest particles. It also stops nasty pathogens and microbes that could make you sick. In fact, your stomach acid is so strong that it can even dissolve bone and metal. Don't start munching down on your soda cans, though. That's probably not going to end well. Your brain has more than 86 billion nerve cells. They're all joined together by 100 trillion connections. That's even more than the number of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. There's a good chance you can guess someone's name based on how they look. Researchers showed portrait photos to a group of people with four names written below. They were asked to choose the right name for this or that person. The law of chance says you'll guess it 25% of the time. But in this research, people got the names correct at a rate of 25 to 40%. And there were more than 94,000 faces shown. Let's say a man is called Bob. People will expect for him to have a rounder face than Tim. They expect Bob to be more jolly and ready to hang out with people. It has to affect his facial appearance in some way. A woman called Catherine can be considered more serious, studious, and concentrated. That could eventually influence her facial muscles as well. When ancient Romans flexed their biceps, they thought their muscles looked like mice. 
That's why the word muscle translates as little mouse in Latin. Your left lung is smaller than the right one because it shares space with your heart. Experts used to think that we can only distinguish 10,000 smells. In fact, a recent study found human beings can recognize one trillion smells. Millennials, or people born between 1981 and 1996, are more forgetful than older people. The main cause of their forgetfulness comes from higher levels of stress. So come on, dude, chill out, okay? Some scientists think that the purpose of fingerprints is a better grip, but others believe they're there to help wick water off them and allow the skin to stretch when needed to protect it from damage. There's also a theory saying that fingerprints improve the sense of touch. Hot coffee can taste better than cold coffee. Your taste bud receptors are most sensitive when your food is at or a little bit above room temperature. Hot coffee can then seem less bitter because taste buds that detect bitterness are more sensitive when the coffee is cold. The biggest molecule in the human body is the chromosome 1. A human cell has 23 chromosome pairs, and each chromosome 1 is made of 10 billion atoms. You inhale 25 sextillion molecules in just one breath. That's 25 followed by 21 zeros. When you're walking faster, at some point, you'll feel the natural urge to start jogging. Your body wants to have a stable state, whether you're running or walking. So, if you're walking fast, it will unconsciously force you to start running. One theory is, we use more energy when walking faster than running. So, that's one of the ways the body saves energy. Your pinky is a powerful little thing. Without it, your hand would lose a significant part of its power. Your index and middle fingers cooperate with your thumb to grab and pinch. And your pinky, together with your ring finger, provides grip strength. The fattiest organ in your body is your brain. Fat makes up at least 60% of its dry weight. This quality got the brain to the Guinness World Records. The organ contains around 25% of your body's cholesterol, which is vital for the brain's well-being. Your bones are four times harder than concrete. The strongest bone in your body is the femur. It can support up to 30 times the weight of a grown-up person. Even crazier is that our bones are made up of composite material, meaning they're both hard and elastic at the same time. Your fingernails grow twice as fast as your toenails. It would take 15 and a half months for your toenails to grow one inch, but only seven months for your fingernails to get this long. The outer layer of your skin is thicker on your feet than on other parts of your body. The heart has its own electrical system and can continue beating even when it's disconnected from the body. The vessels in your body are long enough to circle the earth twice or more. The idea that we use only 10% of our brains is a myth. At any given time, you use almost 100%. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to perform simple tasks, like drink a cup of coffee. More than 70% of your brain consists of water, and it needs 20% of your body's oxygen supply. The average lifespan of one eyebrow hair is four months. The body of a 110-pound person contains 40 tablespoons of salt. If you ironed out all the wrinkles in your brain and laid it flat, it would be the size of a pillowcase. The brain wrinkles as there's not a lot of room in the skull, so it folds over itself as it grows. By the way, don't do that pillowcase thing with your brain. Trust me on this one. We spend 40% of our life with our eyes closed. Most of that time is when we're asleep. But don't forget to count blinking too, or while driving. You produce around 85,000 pints of spit in your lifetime. That's enough saliva to fill around 500 bathtubs. Enough said. The highest blood flow isn't actually in your heart, and it's not in your brain either. It's in your kidneys. It's super hard for us to grasp just how small an atom is. But think of it this way. Your body is made up of a staggering seven octillion atoms. Yeah, doesn't that look like a seven being chased by a whole mob of zeros? For adults, the blood makes up seven to eight percent of the total body weight. About 55% of your blood is liquid plasma. The rest is red and white blood cells and platelets. They form clots and prevent bleeding. You can't swallow and breathe at the same time. The food you swallow and the air you breathe go down the same part of your throat at first. Only a bit deeper does the passage split into the esophagus, 
for food and liquid, and the trachea for air. When you swallow, your airway gets automatically closed off. This prevents you from accidentally inhaling food, but occasionally it still happens. There's a name for the growling sound that your stomach makes when you're hungry. It's called borborygmy. It takes six to eight hours for food to travel through your stomach and small intestine. That's because your body is trying to absorb all its nutrients. The idea that the tongue has flavor zones is a myth. All taste buds can detect five tastes, but some receptors are more responsive than others. Human beings are the only animals that willingly delay sleep. Just make sure you get enough. Your dog doesn't actually have a stronger sense of smell than you do. People often talk about how dogs have a superior sense of smell, and this probably started when a researcher from the 19th century, Paul Broca, marked humans as non-smellers. No one ever provided sensory testing to support this theory, but people still believed in it for a long time. The truth is, different types of animals can identify different kinds of scents. There was an experiment done where human volunteers needed to track a scent. Researchers dipped twine in chocolate essence and then zigzagged it all across a grassy field. Volunteers weren't allowed to use other senses. For example, they were earmuffed and blindfolded. They even wore thick gloves and knee pads. The conclusion they came to is that while we are not as effective as dogs, we can follow a scent trail and become way better if we practice. Interestingly, humans are more sensitive to certain smells compared to dogs, like fruit or flowers. This is because the evolution of dogs didn't require them to sharpen their sense of smell for these types of odors. A TV screen won't ruin your eyesight. At least, there's no evidence that looking at a TV screen can really hurt your eyes. It's the same for phone or computer screens. Looking at them may lead to eye strain or fatigue, but in most cases, it's nothing you can't ease with proper rest. That doesn't mean watching TV or staring at your phone for too long doesn't have negative consequences in other parts of your life, like reduced concentration and lack of socialization, among many other things. Being able to roll your tongue is not really a genetic trait, even though biology teachers often say this gift is based on a dominant gene. There was a study that showed 7 out of 33 twins who didn't actually share this feature. Identical twins share the same genes, which implies that they should share this trait too. But they don't, which means genes are most likely not the factor that decides if you'll be able to roll your tongue. And this myth still exists, even though it was debunked over six decades ago. You're going to catch a cold if you go outside with wet hair is yet another myth. To actually catch a cold, we need to have a virus inside of our body. Also, wet hair is not something that makes you more attractive to the various germs lurking around you. People mostly believe this is true because they A. Heard it from their parents and B associate going outside with your hair being wet with getting sick because you're generally more exposed to germs when you're outside. There are no truly double-jointed people. Some individuals have certain parts of their bodies that are very flexible, so they can, for example, touch their chin with their elbow or bend their fingers backward. We often call these people double-jointed, like the secret is in them having an extra hinge somewhere. Well, it's not true. They have single joints, but they may have bones with oddly shaped ends, or their connective tissue may be very pliable. It seems the appendix, as in the organ, is useful after all, despite its poor reputation as a useless intestinal tube that pretty much goes nowhere. It seems the appendix is actually a reservoir for bacteria, but a good and helpful one. It stores microbes that assist our body when it's fighting certain problems and illnesses. In the early stage of our life, the appendix also helped us with the process of forming white blood cells, together with certain types of antibodies. Hey, do you know where the stomach is? <laughs> Sounds easy, right? But it's probably not where you think. Most people believe it lurks somewhere in the area behind the belly button. In reality, it's a bit higher in the abdomen, sitting on top of the rest of the gut. Here's how you can find it. Look for the point where your lower ribs meet in the middle. 
Now go down approximately three finger widths, and then three to your left. Now you're supposed to be right over the center of your stomach. You don't have taste sections on your tongue. The tongue map probably showed up at the beginning of the 20th century because scientists found minute differences in how strong a taste had to be in different areas inside the human mouth to actually register. This study created a myth that each part of the tongue was responsible for different tastes. In reality, all types of taste buds are spread across all areas of your mouth, and they can detect each taste. This includes umami too, which is now accepted along with the usual four, sweet, salty, bitter, and sour. We don't only use 10% of our brain. We use way more, even when we're sleeping. Scientists tested this statement, and one of the methods they used was measuring activity in the brain while a person was performing various tasks. Results have shown we use most of our brain most of the time. The exact percentage varies from person to person, depending on what they're doing. Plus, it's not possible to monitor every single one of our brain cells. There are billions of them after all, so you can't know the exact number of active ones at any given time. When asleep, your frontal cortex, the part responsible for, let's say, higher level thinking, and certain areas that help you sense your surroundings are still working. Humans don't just have five senses, hearing, taste, touch, sight, and smell. This idea originated from Aristotle, a famous Greek philosopher, who said that there was a sense organ for every sense, eyes for seeing, a tongue for tasting, and so on. But that was thousands of years ago, and he was missing the vestibular system, a key sense organ. The vestibular system is the apparatus of the inner ear that our body uses to stay in balance. Not every sense requires its own sense organ, just a different type of sensory receptor. For example, your skin alone has four different receptors for temperature, touch, pain, and proprioception. Proprioception is body awareness, which means that even if you move your arm behind your back, you still know it's there. Something an octopus, for example, doesn't know. So, saying we have 33 senses could be closer to the truth, not five. These include senses of balance, temperature, thirst, and many more we need to survive. If you like cracking your knuckles from time to time, no need to worry. The whole idea that it increases risks for potential knuckle problems perhaps makes sense in the first place because that's what happens when you constantly put pressure on your joints over the years. The satisfying sound you hear happens because of bubbles bursting in the fluid that actually lubricates your joints, called synovial fluid. If you eat a big meal, you can still go swimming. You won't get cramps. The idea behind this misconception is eating a heavy meal will increase the amount of blood flow to your stomach. That way, blood won't go to your muscles, which will potentially cause cramps if you go swimming. The truth is, you probably won't feel that comfortable swimming immediately after eating a large meal, but you're safe to go if you really want to. It's even recommended to have a small snack that's rich in carbs not long before your swimming session. This will boost your energy. When you shave your body hair, you don't have to worry about it growing back darker and thicker. Because this is a myth. You may believe there are some changes in the color, thickness, or growth rate of the hair. That's because after you shave, you give the follicle a blunt tip, which may look or feel darker and rougher than it was before. But that's just a perception trick. You'll see that once your hair grows in again, it will be the same as before. It's a myth that we lose a disproportionate amount of body heat through our heads. You may feel like that because our head, chest, and face are definitely more sensitive when it comes to changes in temperature. In reality, you'd be just as cold if you went out without a hat as if you weren't wearing pants. You probably feel like you're losing heat through your head because it's often one of those parts that we leave uncovered when going out. No need to worry if you wake up a sleepwalker. You're not going to seriously harm them by doing so. If you startle one, they can be quite disoriented and may have a confused reaction. Sometimes it's better to do that than to let a sleepwalker get up and start doing certain things that they shouldn't be doing while sleeping, like cooking or driving. Or you could just show them the way back to bed. 
The cornea is the only part of your body with living cells that doesn't have blood vessels. It gets nutrients and oxygen directly from the tear fluid on the outside and the thick watery substance you have between the cornea on the inside and also from the nerve fibers connected to the cornea. That's why contact lenses used to be a potential issue. The older ones were reducing oxygen supply since the cornea mostly gets oxygen from the outside. This problem was solved, or at least reduced, when silicone hydrogel lenses came to the market. Some other parts of your body with no blood vessels are your nails, hair, outer skin layers, and tooth enamel. Did you notice your sweat sometimes smells of onions after your workout? You have nothing to worry about. There are two types of sweat glands in your skin. The first kind of glands are located on certain areas of your body, like the groin region and the armpits. They produce a specific oily fluid, which is a response to certain emotional experiences. Another type of sweat gland is way more common. They're distributed all over your body and are responsible for the specific sweat you get after the workout. The sweat cools your body down as it evaporates from your skin. It's 99% water, so it's practically odorless. Well, at least when it first leaves the pores and comes to the surface of your skin. But there are many types of bacteria on the human skin, and they feed on the nutrients in that sweat, together with skin flakes. One of the byproducts of this is specific chemicals, and their smell can sometimes strongly remind you of onion. You may have noticed you produce more saliva when you go for a run, especially if it's a short jog in cold weather. But if you're running a marathon and it's a nice warm day outside, you'll produce less saliva. It's your body trying to offset the drying effect since you breathe through your mouth way more. But your body becomes more dehydrated over longer periods, which is why it's trying to conserve water by reducing saliva production. Every training you do, no matter how intensive it is, also makes you secrete more of a specific type of protein. It makes the saliva more viscous and sticky, which is why you may feel like your mouth is dry way more after your workout. Humans see the world 15 seconds out of date, which means your brain constantly keeps you a little bit in the past. This way, it helps you stabilize your vision of the world around you. Your eyes receive a huge amount of visual information. Yep, literally millions of colors, shapes, and ever-changing motion wherever you turn. It's not an easy task for your brain to process all that. The visual world alters all the time because of changes in viewpoint, light, and the rest of the outer factors. Your visual input changes because you need to blink. Plus, your head, eyes, and your entire body are always in some sort of motion. Your brain has to establish a mechanism that can create illusory stability. It automatically smooths your visual input it doesn't analyze every little visual snapshot. It's like a time machine. You actually perceive an average of things you saw in the past 15 seconds at any given moment. The brain pulls together objects so they appear more similar to each other. That's why it tricks you into believing you're in stable surroundings. If your brain kept you updated in real time, the world would feel like a very, very chaotic place with constant changes in movement, light, and shadow which would probably feel like you were hallucinating all the time. Your bones are really strong, but your teeth, which we also consider as part of the skeletal system, are even stronger. That's because of the enamel, the hard outer layer of your tooth. The enamel keeps the tissue and the delicate nerves inside your teeth safe. You're basically burning calories while you're thinking. When you rest and don't engage in any particular activity, except for the basics, which includes digesting, breathing, and keeping yourself warm, it's the stage where your brain uses up to 20 to 25% of the total energy of your body. That means your body will burn around 350 to 450 calories per day while pretty much doing nothing. We're not the only ones in the animal kingdom with such a mechanism. Some small mammals like the minuscule pygmy marmoset and the tiny tree shrew devote the same percentage of their total body energy to their brain. 
Most of the energy the brain burns is to help its cells, the neurons, to communicate with each other. They do it via chemical signals the brain transmits across synapses, those special cell structures. So the brain directs a lot of energy towards synapses in order to make them work. Your brain never really rests. Even when you're sleeping, certain parts are active. So your brain needs its fuel to work, and you're basically burning calories in your sleep. The more demanding mental tasks you take throughout the day, the more calories you burn. So, if you skip today's workout, solve some Sudoku. Do you like to rush with your ice cream? Sometimes it pays off, but if you do it often, you must know the feeling of brain freeze pretty well. It's a pretty intense and uncomfortable feeling that comes from the front or sides of your head right after you drink or eat something cold, such as a slushy drink, ice cream, or an ice pop. Some people even go through a similar sensation whenever they're exposed to cold air. Scientists are still not sure exactly why this happens, but one of the theories is the cold substance stimulates a cluster of nerves located at the back of the palate. Another theory says the blood vessels in the roof of the mouth and sinuses quickly constrict because the temperature in your mouth drops before they dilate again. Brain freeze is not something dangerous that you should be seriously worried about. And no, hanging over the table, groaning, or clasping your head in your hands won't help much. Some people like to sleep a lot. Hey, <laughs> guilty as charged. But some have a certain condition called familiar natural short sleepers, which means they're kind of immune to sleep deprivation. About 1% of our population has it. They can fall short on sleep and feel pretty good about it. They're fine with sleeping for six hours per night. This amount would wreck the majority of people after a couple of nights. The human eye normally has three cones. That means we can recognize approximately a million different shades in the green, red, and blue spectrums of colors. But there are some people with a rare condition, so-called tetrachromats, that have four cones in their eyes. This allows them to see ultraviolet shades, which means they can distinguish 100 million distinct colors. Did you know your skeleton is all wet? I mean, your entire body mostly consists of water, up to 60%. That fluid is not only in your organs, muscles, and skin, it's in your skeleton too. Your bone mass is almost one-third water. There's this amazing hidden network a human body holds inside. Blood vessels are really small, but if you could line them all up, you'd get something huge. Your entire body boasts a network of 60,000 miles of blood vessels. One of the ways to keep your network healthy is by eating right. Have you ever wondered why our distant relatives, the primates, are so much stronger than us? In many ways, our bodies are very similar. Look at the chimp's muscle structure, for example. But our closest primate relatives are approximately 1.35 times stronger than us. The human body developed more slow-twitch muscle fibers compared to the rest of the primates. This type of muscle fiber is a less powerful one, but it lets us endure more than other primates and do things like foraging and hunting, activities that helped our distant ancestors to survive. That's also the reason why we can run a marathon. A monkey could never do it. But we'd still lose in a strength competition. Laughter is contagious. It's not just a metaphor. Researchers have found that strong emotions can make the brain activity of different people sink. Laughter is something science usually links with social creatures. People are almost 30 times more likely to laugh when in some social situations, hanging out with their friends or people they feel relaxed with. One of the theories says that you're probably going to join when you see your friend laughing because humans are empathetic beings. Your brain will release endorphins when you're laughing. These are special chemicals that make you feel safe and at ease. So we're not sure why exactly our laughter is contagious, but it feels really good, so... <laughs> Join us on the Bright Side of Life and laugh away. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. 